everybody. I'm Carol Marks, and this is where I host my remarks on glamour, pop culture, and front page news. This podcast is a member of Give Me Liberty Media. Now, let's get right to it. This is really way too long. Hello, good morning, happy Sunday. Before we get started, first of all, I would like to uh, tell everybody that I'm going to be uh, doing a live stream later today, 2 o'clock Central Time. I'm going to chat with Allie Snyder and from Twitter. I know her from X, and her profile reads, Freedom of Speech, because sometimes you can't recognize crazy until you hear it talk. Defend the 1A, exercise the 2A, and she's the U.S. Store Manager for LetWomenSpeak.org. Um, we are going to have a chat. She has a X pinned to her profile where she has spoken several times in front of her school board, uh, to help save the children. And she has posted her speeches on there, uh, to help others to hopefully get inspired and get involved to help save the kids. Second of all, happy national coffee day and welcome to the gent. Hello, good morning. Okay, this is when I talk. Yes, this okay. is when you talk. All right. <laughs> hey, good morning. Happy coffee day. What a beautiful day it is to be drinking coffee. Do you like coffee? I love coffee. Yeah, I opened up a new pound of coffee today. We, uh, as most of you know, we are kind of coffee snobs, and we get our coffee from a certain place here in, in Alabama where they freshly roast the beans, and we go get the beans, and... They're, actually, I have them ground it for us, but we are drinking espresso roast today. It is their darker roast with a blend of Colombian and something else. I can't remember. Uh, beans. Um, and it is delicious. Mm. It's one of our favorites. Yes, espresso is one of my favorites. Yeah. So we do support our local roasters, and I am going to go to probably go to Starbucks and get an iced coffee, too. To, I wasn't going to, but now that it's National Coffee Day, I will. Good for you. That's awesome. <laughs> look, That's National awesome. Coffee Day. Oh, yeah, look, yeah, sure is. Yeah, we got hooked on this stuff a long time ago, and uh, we just, you know, that that's just, it, you can tell there is such a difference between the, the freshly roasted coffee that we get um, and bagged coffees. Not to say the bagged coffee is not good, but... You know, when you get the bag coffees, you get tons of fillers in them so they can make it go further and cheapen the price and all that kind of stuff. And when you drink coffee that is just coffee, it's coffee, not something else. That will make sense to most people. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah, and I, you know, I put on X last week sometime complaining about how, you know, my coffee wasn't ready. I went to Starbucks to get my coffee, mm. you know how I do. Yeah. <laughs> and somebody replied back, Starbucks coffee sucks. You need to support a local roaster, blah, blah, blah. I was like, oh, okay. How do you know I don't already? Yeah, exactly. And the coffee I get, I don't get the hot coffee. I get the iced coffee. So it's really not coffee, but it's whatever. It's a flavored, coffee-flavored drink. I like it, and I'm going to get it. It's, it's, it's America. I can still do that. Absolutely. Yeah. Tell me what I need to do. Yeah. I mean, I, when I go to Starbucks and I do, you know, get a regular coffee, it's not good coffee. It really isn't. It's, I like it. No. Whatever. What? The coffee out yeah, of the urn? Well, just. Just the regular coffee is what yeah, we It's okay. It's not watered down. I know that. No, it's not watered down. It's just been sitting in the urn baking yeah. for a while. And it's, you know, it's, it's. You know, a brand that they get and they put the fillers in there to let it, you know, so they can, you know, increase their profit margin. So, anyway, we're going to move on. Yeah, anyway, the coffee's good. It, yeah. it, it, at our household this morning, the coffee's really good. Happy, <laughs> happy National Coffee happy Day. Happy National Coffee Day. What are you going to do to celebrate National Coffee Day? I got Day? up at five this morning and started drinking it. So, I don't mean you. I meant in general. I was asking uh, our, I was asking our listeners. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> That yes. was not the question of the day. Yes. What are you going to do today to celebrate National Coffee that Day? That is not the question of the day. Right. That is not the co- mm-hmm. That is not the question of the day. The question of the day is, did you stay up to watch the Georgia-Alabama game? Oh, my. <laughs> That's all I have to say about that game. That's all? Oh, That's all? my. 
Well, no, that's not all. That's that's what I would if if somebody would say describe the Georgia Alabama game last night, I would just say, oh my, <laughs> oh my, because it was one of those they're calling it an instant classic. You know, Georgia was just not there the first half, and we're getting the literal crap kicked out of them. And I told I told my beautiful wife sitting here, I said, if we score twenty eight points tonight. I will call it a moral victory and be happy with the way the boys came back fighting to try to get back in the game. But I never, ever thought we were going to take the lead and have a chance to win the game and then get heartbroken by the touchdown pass and then get heartbroken again by the interception in the end zone. Um, it was a phenomenal game, and I think if, 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 if it were all said and done, the two teams played again, it would be one of those uh, – uh, games that you'd see two probably different teams playing against each other. Um, that's just the way it is nowadays with those athletes. Uh, you know, Alabama came back and had an edge, and Georgia made the necessary adjustments and shut them down in the second half. And when I say that's the way college ball is getting, I've always said that from a historic standpoint, and I, I, I call it history for me now because I'm in my 60s, but I've watched you know, college football become, or high school football become what I used to think of as college football. College football has become what used to be pro football. Professionals have just gotten better at their trait. And today, that was watching Georgia, Alabama play a professional football game because one team had an edge, and in the second half, there were adjustments made by that other team that made it into a football game. And a lot of times you see that in professional football where team goes out and they're 17 points ahead, but that other team comes back, makes adjustments because their athletes are so good. They make adjustments. They chip away and they chip away. And the next thing you know, at the end of the game, it's you know a one, two-point game. And that's what I saw last night in the Georgia-Alabama game. Um College football's become pro football, basically. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, still, it was very enjoyable. <clears throat> President Trump was there, and he got a uh, an ovation that Kam Kamala could never even think about getting. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was that was a good thing. I enjoyed that. And you actually sat there with me the whole night. I did. Yeah. Typically, I do not sit no. out there and watch football with you. I'll stay back here and watch a movie or whatever, watch a show. Yeah. But I don't know. I decided let me watch. Let me watch it with him. It's the Georgia Alabama game. You know. Yeah. It'll be exciting. It was exciting, it but. Was. Ooh. And she kept saying, "I probably should have watched." She was saying, <laughs> "She probably should have watched a movie." I was like, "Yo, know, you couldn't get any more entertainment than that game, and then watching me, <laughs> watching me." Swearing and cussing and, <laughs> you know, picking my... You weren't that bad. No, I was very calm and tame. Yes, I was. I did I did let an expletive or two fly, but <laughs> it was early in the game. And I remember you even said that you were surprised at how calm and mm -hmm. how well I was taking mm -hmm. it. And I was like, you know, I looked at you and said, this isn't life. This is just a game. <laughs> You know, I, I I don't get as stirred up as you think I do. <laughs> yeah. But I did say if we come back and win this game, I'm going outside and yelling at my lungs go at the top of my lungs go dogs, <laughs> mm. <laughs> which I would have done if we had won. So it was it was a very entertaining game. The season's not over. You know, uh, Georgia's a very young team with a lot of players on it that are new, and uh, I think that we played well. Well, Second good. Half. All right. Who do they play next? <laughs> Auburn. All right. Yeah. Well, speaking of speaking of stirring things up and seasons, we have the hurricane season upon us. Oh yeah. And apparently, oh. Hurricane Helene, Helene, whatever her name is, has just totally devastated. What is it, North Carolina? Yeah, South lots Carolina? of lots of the western parts of North Carolina up in the mountains and through there. It's just devastated that it. it's you were scrolling through uh, your ex and you saw lots and lots of videos of all that yeah there's so many places up in especially those mountains in north carolina southern ohio apparently is flooded everywhere too mm -hmm. i have a couple of friends on there that uh 
posted a bunch of stuff, and two mm-hmm. high school boys from West Portsmouth helped save a couple of people. Oh, good. And, I mean, but anyway. Well, that's good, yeah. There's so many places, especially up in those mountains, where, you know, if if, if you get a ton of rain, uh, like, you know, the level flatlands, you're not going to have that flash flash flooding that apparently caused a lot of the, the damage throughout the mountains and stuff in, in, in North Carolina, uh, you know, where the rain funnels off the mountains and just runs through. And it, it took some of those communities just just leveled and washed some of them. Some of them aren't even there anymore. Mm. I always tell the story that there was a golf course up in North Carolina uh, that was near Boone. Uh, it was a beautiful, beautiful, I think they rebuilt it, but it was one of these exclusive club, beautiful places where, you know, you could see it driving along this mountain road. And as you're on the mountain road, the mountains huge, big to the right, or as we were arriving to the left and a big, big stream down the right side of the road. And you see the golf course over there. And one of these storms went up through there. And I I hear later on that the golf course was just totally washed away from that storm. And they ended up in rebuilding and all that stuff. But you could see, you know, at hindsight, you could see that if they got the torrential rains like they did from the hurricane, that it would just wash that place out just because of the funnel effect of that. And, and apparently that's what happened with a lot of those places up there. A lot of a lot of places still don't have power. People can't get in and out because the roads are gone. Uh, they're just stranded. So, you know, lo- lots of prayers going out for those folks today. Yep. Yeah. Lots of prayers to them. So. Yeah, they don't, they're not caring about a football game today, no, that's for uh-uh. sure. No, they're not. Mm, they're I can't not. imagine. I can't either. That's awful. Yep. Yeah. And so far inland from from the yeah. you know hurricane itself. So, all right. What else you got? Sweetie? I don't really have anything else. Really, you don't have anything lively and energetic and fun for the people that are listening in today. Yes, actually, we had our grand cam yesterday. Yes, we did. We had oh. our grand cam, and what a heartbreaker he's going to oh. be. <laughs> He's so dang cute and adorable and smart. Oh, my gosh. I know we're his grandparents. So, you know, we have a different take. But come on. He's so cute. He is. He is. And And smart. And the funny thing is that he is so much his dad. (laughs) That was what was getting me yesterday. He's he's so smart. He's so cute. He just had those mannerisms of, of... uh, and his facial expressions, <laughs> and then of course, you know, we got got him a cake pop yesterday, and <laughs> you know he had the cake. He only taken a little bitty bite out of it, and he's dancing around, playing, you know, running, having a great time. And I see the cake pop. I said, "Here, come get you a little bite of your cake pop." So he gets the cake pop, and you know he takes a little bit of bite. I said, "Here, let's put it back up here so you don't drop it on the floor." And he shook his head no and ran off with it. And <laughs> like his dad, the next thing I know, he, he's not taking a bite of it. He has sucked the whole thing into his mouth, and you know, and just just big old mouthful of cake pop. I'm like that 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 that'd be your dad. <laughs> so it was he was he was great. He's such a good kid. <laughs> yeah, he loves his cars. No, He'll sit he down. Does. He will sit down and play by himself and be so entertained by himself, playing by himself with his cars or whatever. He'll sit there and play for a while mm-hmm. without needing anything. And it, I, you know, we just let him do it because that's yeah. good for him. Yeah, to be able to entertain yourself like that, use your imagination Easy. and your brain. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, he can see, and he just. Sucking in knowledge left and right. He's like a AI on AI, <laughs> AI with blood flowing through him. You know, he's just sucking in, sucking it all in. So absorbing everything around him. So cool. Yeah. So cool. Yep. You can tell we're gushing grandparents. Yes. <laughs> Took him to the grocery store yesterday. Uh-huh. And got him a cookie. Yeah. He's he, a good boy. Yeah, he is. He just loves going places and loves talking and, he and did, he loves did, learning. He did say something that was so funny yesterday. He said, 
Uh, we were talking about going to the grocery store. He goes, I need vegetables for my belly. <laughs> That's what he said. Yeah, he did. <laughs> vegetables for my belly. <laughs> he did. He's starting to talk a lot. He, uh, you know, he understands us, what we say, too. Mm-hmm. Vegetables for my belly. That <laughs> <laughs> uh, was funny. He does need vegetables for his belly. He also yeah. needs some meat. Yeah, we got to figure that out. Yeah. All right, we need, let's do a Dear Abby. Okay. Want to do a Dear Abby? Sure. All right, let me pull it up here. Let's see. Hey, this is unrehearsed, dear Abby. So you're getting my yes fresh, clean. Here we go impression. Mine too. This is the first time I've read it. Oh boy, here All we right, go. All right, dear Abby, my internet boyfriend is thirty years younger than me. I'm afraid he won't like what he sees in person. Ah, uh, dear Abby, I met a young man on Facebook. Mm hmm. He is a philanthropist, mm -hmm. and we have been talking for more than six months. He's kind and sweet, and he tells me he loves me. Mm -hmm. He works around the world as an interior designer and will be returning to the States in a couple of weeks. Oh, hun, no, don't believe it. The problem is I'm 30 years older than he is. He has seen photos of me and thinks I am beautiful and a good woman. I am stressed about meeting him because he wants a life together, even though I have shared all of my health issues. Please help me. I have tried to end it because of the age difference, but he gets very upset. And so we go on. I do care about him. What should I do? My question is, how much money have you been sending him? (laughs) Mm -mm. Waffling in Georgia. All right. What do you think about Uh, this? We don't know a lot of details. All we know is that she's 30 years older. They met on Facebook, and that's it. Okay, number two, and number one, and number three, and (laughs) number four, and number five. All right. What is this guy who is a philanthropist (laughs) and a world traveler and all doing on Facebook meeting women? Mm -hmm. Number one, there's all kinds of wrong with that. Yeah. Uh, You know, I don't see many philanthropists. You know, right. th- they're you know th- that means he's got lots of money, right? So he's got lots of money by scamming these women out of their money. Yeah, probably by scamming women. Look at Herschel, Herschel and Trump. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sorry, we're look, watch. We have TV on in the background. They have Trump on and Herschel Walker's in the background. That's yeah. what the gent was and pointing they, and at. And they were at the uh, uh, Georgia Georgia-Alabama Alabama game, game last night. I think that's awesome. Um, but there's all just, there's so much wrong with that. First of all, if I, if I'm dear Abby and I'm giving her advice, I'm going to say, get off Facebook, go to your senior center (laughs) and meet some people there. And your own age. (laughs) Because they're going to be the people that you can trust. Yeah. More so than getting scammed by somebody who claims to be a philanthropist who's hanging out on Facebook. Mm-hmm. All right, let's see. Are you done? Are you have more? There's just so many ways <laughs> that I could go with that, but yes, yes. I'm done. I think mm, I think it's wrong. She yeah. needs to, mm-mm. especially if he gets upset because she wants to end it. She says she tried to end it. Mm-hmm. He gets very upset. I'm sure he does. You're probably yeah. giving him money. All right, here we go. Dear Waffling, tread very carefully. Although you have communicated over the last six months, he may not quite be the person he has presented himself to be. Make no commitments until you have actually met him in person. Hold on to your skepticism and do not give him money for any reasons because things seem to be too good to be true, often are. There you have it. Yeah, she was very kind with her advice. <laughs> I'd have slapped the hell out of her. Yeah. Said, what the hell are you thinking? Yeah. So, yeah. All right, we do need a question of the day. Stand by. Yeah. All right, the gent has come up with a question of the day. And I kind of steal this from, you know, because I've uh, been, been kind of, my mind's been kind of wandering back to Jimmy Buffett since it's been a little over a year now since he passed away. But in one of his songs, he has a line. <clears throat> it, uh, it, I won't, I won't give you the preceding lines, but the line comes up to, you pick the century and I'll pick the spot. And he's talking about, you know, going back in time and picking 
a place and a time to go somewhere. So like if you said, okay, I want to go back to the 1400s and I want to go to New York City, well, you'd be sitting on a, a piece of land that had nobody on it. So that wouldn't be the best pick in the world, of course. But that's the whole romanticized part about it. You know, you pick a century, pick the century and the, pick the spot. What would you choose to do? What part of history would you want to go back and be either a part of or see or whatever the case is? So the question is, if you got to go back in time, where would you go and what time, uh, what, what, where would it get, where would you go and what would the calendar date be? Okay. That's a that's that's a real interesting thing. And you don't and, you and know you're hard, not you're not going to answer it. It's hard to answer. I've I've tried to answer mm-hmm. it in my brain a hundred many million thousand times. Every time I've listened to that song, it's always been, huh? Where would I go? What would I do? That's such an interesting question. Mm-hmm. Think about it All while right. you're pondering, while you're drinking your second cup of coffee. Mm-hmm. Since it's National Coffee Day, mm-hmm. ponder that question. All right, sounds good. Where would you go? I don't know. No, nah, no. Nah, I have no it's idea. It's a tough question, isn't it? But I, my, <clears throat> when you first asked me this, my thought was, am I allowed to come back to present <laughs> time? <laughs> if I can only, if I'll go for a week, that, that widens it up a little bit. If I'm allowed to come back to present time, you know. Well, here, here's the thing about this question. But if I'm stuck there, then that, woo, that definitely will narrow it down. That makes all your choices about where to go and what time to go all that much more important, doesn't yes. it? Uh-huh. uh-huh. So, yeah, that's a it's a great question to ponder. Well, there you have it. All right. Then. We need to go. Well, I've enjoyed this. Thank you for inviting me. All right. You have anything else to say? Go dogs. There you go. <laughs> Thanks for listening, and I'll be back again tomorrow. What's that? Who pays your salary? What's that? Who pays? What's that? We're not a democracy!